my new truck has arrived look at that isn't that pretty if you like red it's pretty if you don't it's probably not go walk around f-350 ford got the name on her it's a lariat it's not the top of the line but it's got everything i want Except adaptive crews that don't have that. I would like to have that. Big screen because it's a 2022. Now all I got to do is get my tool bed that's uh, for a gooseneck trailer. Because it will be call, hauling a gooseneck seed tender next spring. Take this bed off, put on the new one. We're supposed to be in the second week of September. They have now moved it back to November. But we'll get it when we get out of the field. Back to irrigating. Um, First one I kicked on was in Illinois, down around home, St. Francisville. Well, now I am at Robinson. We got three of them that we irrigate out of one spot out of this ditch. Um, came up Saturday, got the north one and the last one going. So all of them's had a half inch on it, put it on it last week. I put a little bit more on it this week. Start back with the first one we got running and then just work back through it because no rain in the forecast and they're supposed to be high in the mid 90s every day this week so still putting on pods or aborting pods or filling pods so still do a lot of good here yeah there we go there's a little one coming still at the top and these are a three five uh liberty beans what these are uh morse is george He's over in Indiana, firing up some of those, turning some others off because we had a rain Saturday, just went south. Didn't get any up here, like a tenth at home. Two tenths on part of the Indiana ground, then the very south got uh, nine tenths, I believe. So that'd be good for it. So he's over there messing with those. Jane Dalton, continue to get the trucks ready. Still truck week, second truck week to be exact. Came in Saturday, work on my semi. Both hubs were leaking. Did change all the brakes, they were gone. And <laughs> get sent to get brakes, come back with chrome. I don't know how that works, but it's been pretty good here lately. We'll have more videos of, we got three more other trucks to work on. Is that right? We got three done. Three more to go. Garrett continues to get the bins ready. And dad's mowing and working very hard as he's doing it. I'm in Knox County, Southern Knox County, Indiana. Mowing around fields. Down here is an irrigation rig that covers about 380, 90 acres, I think. Maybe 400. But it pumps out of the river. We got three type units that's pumping out. We got two out of the river. We got one out of a stream of the Robson. They're all set up a little bit different. The one at St. Francisville, it's uh, electric, so it's completely different. This here on the Wabash in Indiana is a diesel. Pretty big motor. So we got a thousand gallon fuel tank we use for it. We got this sitting right here on the river bank. Got this pipe down into the river. Got a screen on the end. Pump here on the motor, sucking that water out of the river. If that screen becomes exposed, it will start sucking air and wipe this up a little different. The river gets much lower. We got a river screen that will take it out of six inches of water. A rotating screen we just bought. George went to Missouri to get that and set in there and it floats. If it gets that low, we'll probably stick it in. If it doesn't, we'll probably just wait till next year and start using it. Anyway, that sucks that up out of there. 
go through that pump on that diesel motor, comes through this pipe right here, comes up here to this spot, and goes into the ground into a 10 inch PCV pipe. From there it goes under the ground for about a half a mile up to the center of that irrigation rig. So it takes a pretty big motor, pretty big pump to pump it that forward just to get it there with enough pressure. Then when it gets there, it's got to pump it through that system that is uh, probably 2,000 feet long, the irrigation system itself, maybe a little bit more. So you got to pump it basically a mile time it gets to the center of the pivot and back out to the end. Uh, this is a hydraulic unit, so the end guns run off just pressure, no motor pressure. The electric ones have a boost pump. So you can see it's got a lot of pressure out there. Motor's doing its job. So, comes from down there out of the wall bash, under the ground in a pipe, to the center way out there, then into the rig itself. These are not as nice as the ones that pump out well, because you gotta have a motor here, you gotta have a motor out there at the center to run the pivot. And if you got a well, you have the, if you're lucky, you got the well right at the pivot, it's running it and the water well itself with a PTO shaft. But it all works. You know, when you don't have enough water, which right by the wall bash, you would think you would down in the ground. But you don't, because there's uh, sandstone down there, not too poor. I expect it's about 30 feet to hit it, 20 feet, and you can't drill through it. On the river down here, up that way, a little ways, there's a place called Hanging Rock where you can see that sandstone on the Illinois side actually hanging over the river. About the sandstone, I hope you can see this. I wish I had a zoom on this camera. Right across the river there is a sandstone ledge on the Illinois side that sticks out. That's called Hanging Rock. And the story goes that the French trappers used to come down this river trapping beaver and stuff when they first started doing that and the Indian ladies would stand up on this rock and there's you can see it there is a good place to stand there because it hangs out there and attract the trappers and so the trappers would pull over and when the trappers would pull over here would come the braves and they would uh, take the french pelts and things and i don't know what else but you know it's like all those things you don't know how true it is but uh it makes good sense so that's the way the story goes. Got her filled up, decided to park the trailer there because definitely they'll need to irrigate, irrigate again next week and who knows, that might be about it. But get this started up. Got to prime the motor, or pr sorry, prime the pipe to get that water sucked up here. We'll do that. Little valve here that opens to the exhaust, stick the thing there, sucks her up, and then we kick the PTO on. The cinder to, uh, the irrigation, so. Never again, Liberty. Never again. Hopefully it should be pretty good though. I'll give a little bit of an update on Eli, our Marine, while I'm mowing here along the fields. Uh, talked to Eli Saturday evening. He is in Texas. I cannot 
not tell you the name of the town, but it's in the western, west of center, I know that. He's at a base, it's actually an Air Force base they've got him in. I think he said there's roughly 300 Marines there or so that they are training them on aircraft rescue. So I guess his job at this time is gonna be when a helicopter goes down or a plane or something, it's gonna be them that comes in there and tries to get what they can, get things picked up, bodies out, rescue the people. He said, you'll be an EMT here for too long. He said, not really is comfort zone, but that's what he's doing. Uh, it sounds like he's getting along just fine. He started the classes. I think this aircraft rescue, if I understood him right, is supposed to take about 60 days of classes time. So, one of these days, he's going to get back home for a leave, and we're thinking maybe Christmas time, we're hoping we'll have him on here if he gets home then. So Eli's doing real good. Real proud of him for what he's doing for his country, for all of us. A lot more proud of him than I am the politicians, I can tell you that. See that? See that guy? My yard was so green, so full, and so beautiful. And just like that. Army worms came and ate it. Now, where they been, it's brown. Damon, would I be executive tur if he killed them? Killed them this morning, but they definitely, definitely did some damage before we got a handle on them. It's like the third time I've had this happen at my house. It's just, this is a bad spot for army worms here. No doubt about it. Damon sprayed them this morning and I was just stopping by Make it look like, make sure they were dying. I see one, two, three, four dead right there, so. Good, good, I'm glad you're dead. Made it back to the farm. So, so disgusted over my yard. It looks, it looks so good. Now it don't. But I think we're gonna hook the 1950 corn combine to this head which is a gearing off and uh, start putting on some stock devastators. Still not gonna get that combine out yet. I'm gonna take this spiker we got. Old tile machine that we, well we do our mains with it now mostly. He's tile plow for the laterals. I'm gonna take this on a little road trip. We'll take it to David's house. So uh, it's kind of out of our way for the fall. Like a glove. All right, now we'll get her out and get the corn head hooked up. Tuesday. We got Reese. Friday. Putting stock devastators on the Gearing Off Cornhead to hopefully leave the stocks devastated. <laughs> Truck five. Literally over changing wheel sills. And never gonna just trickle. 
it's always when it goes bad it goes bad yeah spacer in there it's so you don't over tighten the bearings for people that don't know how to work on them see so it's got like a set torque spec 350 foot pounds if you have those in your wheel hub chuck them and just do it old school because if you don't normally i don't know if that one's got it in it because they changed it but if you got one in it and it's leaking chuck it just get rid of the thing ain't worth having just tighten it down back it off old school did have to get batteries for it and a new brake for that side because it was bad just due to the oil but definitely over changing brakes and wheel seals. Well, we got half of them on. I think they call them devastators because they leave you devastated because stuff's heavy, ain't it, Dalton? Yeah. It's heavy. But we're halfway there, and now I'm going to cut out on Dalton and go mess with an irrigation rig. So, see you, bud. Have fun. Bye, Dad. See you tomorrow. See you, son. What are you doing, Jay? Trying to make sure this wheel hub quit leaking. How many of those have you done over the past two weeks? This makes the third one, and now the neck, well, I'm doing, I guess, just one brake on here, but I've done two full trucks of brakes. I'm really tired of brakes. Jay's brake service, uh, don't give him a call because he's tired of it. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> available. Still uh, in the shop. Got the bush hog in today. Danny's been doing a bunch of mowing and gonna have to change some blades. That's a little bent up. I think you're a little past due. Spent the morning getting some, uh, fixing some things on the irrigations that aren't, weren't working. Now they are. I had uh, Dave Reinbolt from Zomatic help me get the end gun shut off right on the one of Robinson. Dalton and Jay, in the meantime, continuing to put the, uh, get our stock devastators on. I can help finish. Our snapper rolls on the skewering off. I don't know if you can tell there, but instead of just interlacing, there's like two that go into one. I don't know. If... Let's see. I don't know if you can hardly tell. See that one will go between these two. Anyways, I'm supposed to break the stalks up more. So doing that instead of the chopping this year, which we started again last year. And we had some uh, NDY stock stompers, which were just the individual ones that went. We thought they kept wearing out a lot. So we now have the Yetter stock devastators here, which is pretty much like a rolling basket, heavy rolling basket going right behind the rows. Got that mounted up. Hey, got some spring pressure, hangs down to the roller, right underneath each roller, got these little iron pieces these fins to hopefully uh, knock the stocks over so it doesn't poke up tires on tractors combines semis uh, pickups break down faster here comes the combine operator oh. now that we got her on it's all on last minute boys you need any help <laughs> yeah you can shut that one right hey up. i got the worms you got worms at your house yep you kill them they or are they all spray over we'll spray them in the morning Army worms, worse since 2014. Kill my yard. I was about to say, quit eating gas station food. Well, I said Damon text and said go to the vet. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this guy's picky What's about his right? yard too. This ain't yeah, good. Dad's in the backhoe. We're in uh, the truck, We've got the trailer. We are going to get the river pump out of the river, south of St. Francisville, because we're done. We are done irrigating that corn. Uh, this is the river pump at St. Francisville. It's a floating pump and it's electric. All right, this one's a little different than the one I talked about in Indiana because it's electricity. So this floats, got an electric motor down here. You can kick on from the center pivot up there about a half a mile. Turns that pump on right there, pumps water in this hose up here to this. This is a eight inch PCV pipe, goes a half mile to the center. 
And then when it kicks off, this kicks off. Or you can turn it off there, or you can start it here. We've got it anchored with two trees, cables. So I'm doing them now. We're gonna try to pull this dude up here. Yeah, kabam, <laughs> splash, down the wall bash. So we're down, reaching. I get a better view here, so we got that basket around it, keep trash out. That pump is right there. Just turn, turn, turn. Shoots it through that hose up here into this pipe that goes underground. No problem. Ivers Farms, narrowly averting death and putting things in the river since 1936. There it goes. About to get a lot lighter. Or it did just get a lot lighter. Good. Just a change, rub it on it a little bit. All right, just straight down. Ow! You're free. Load it up. Good job, Dalton. Good job, Reese. Good job, Backhoe. Good job, Ford. Good job, Ford. Good job, Corn Pro. Good job, Pump. Good job, Pump. All year. Uh, Good job, Dad. I'll throw him in. I'm gonna store her right here. This means down. This means down. This means down. This means tilt. That means tilt. This means, this means down. down. I know. I'm on this new Yeah, yeah, there we go. No, this means down. This means tilt. This means up. Hey, what means up? Like this? Like this? this. Is it it's not like this? No, it is this. It's this. It means up. That must be trucker sign language. No, it's ocean. <laughs> Never heard of her. Well, he's got the combine outside, see how depth stairs look on the ground, whatnot. It's just about as high as he picks. Now to see if they'll fit on the header trailer. Which we only put the combines on the header trailer when we go to Indiana, when we go to the Robson, so just a couple times a year and at the end. He's a, this is a folding head, so he just folds it up to go everywhere else once he gets there. But we do use it every once in a while. Last two trucks. Then all the trucks will be ready. Would you ever get done fixing trucks? We're tired of trucks being in this shop, taking up shop room. This is a farm. This is not a truck mechanic shop, Jay. Let me just tell you. It's like one minute I turn around, I think I'm about done with something. Next minute, something else is done. Look who's made the return. He's back. I'm back with more scars. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Looks good. It's a good look. It's, well, yeah, it's not leaking. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. Would you prefer... Hey, what? Isn't that the culvert you just put in the ground he dug up? That's a different one. <laughs> <laughs> Would you prefer baseball head? Or Frankenstein. 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 I like Frankenstein too. I already too. went with that with. Okay. Oh, I can't tell that story. Oh yeah. G, G, well, I can't tell. G rated. Yes. G rated here. <laughs> Maybe PG. Well, we're glad to have you back, David. We're glad you're not dead.
Yep. As long as you, you guys get the combine ready to go. Well, yeah, it's part of it. Got part of it ready. We just gotta get the header finished. Yep, to the headers. All right, clean out pigsty of a truck. Jerry's just about got the technical bugs figured out. On the gearing hoff, wouldn't fold or unfold or do anything like that. Do some H&R AgriPower, great mechanic. Dave is bringing in the MacDon. 40 footer. I'm gonna rebuild the knife, do some other stuff to it. One, we're gonna have to do a few more things than that, but they both need the knives rebuilt. Manual labor on the first day. About time that lazy bum did something. I know. Well, something about it. Back behind the camera. <laughs> something about a headache or something. Uh, I don't know. Splitting headache. Splitting headache. <laughs> Got a convoy coming across the bridge today. I got the Traco. Dalton's got a culvert on a trailer, and Jay's got a skid steer on a trailer. Another day, another culvert job. Well, that's the first one of those I've seen. Newton's that farm bias down in uh, Southern Knox County. They got a little corn picked. It was running 31% from what I hear, and it was good, but that's all here, Seg. Nice to see. This is the culvert we're gonna be replacing today. It's evidently caved in right there. We cannot get to that side of this little creek to harvest it, so we are going to replace this culvert. This is the lowest spot we farm. The White River backs up into it. By peas in the river at Hazelton, I think they'll go over this culvert. It's also the farthest south we farm. We're uh, straight across the river from uh, Mount Carmel, Illinois, but we're on the Indiana side. So we'll get the old one out, put a new one in, and uh, cover her up. That thing was smashed. Smashed. Got the culvert in, putting dirt on top of it. Jay's running up top getting some dry dirt to reach dug out of the hill, some dry sand. Reese is spreading it around here on the culvert itself. We want to make a little bit of a hump over it. So we got more coal, uh, cover. There wasn't enough cover on it before. He's the feathering her out. I've got a load of that ground up asphalt from the Highway 1 in the peat. We're going to put it on top here and we're done. Hopefully it'll be able to drive right over it. Time we pick here in a couple, three weeks, there will be at least three. Over here, I'll be able to drive right over the semi plan. But she's looking good. This is a low swampy area right here. This is the brown ditch that goes clear up through our indie farm 
goes down to the White River down this way. Uh, about a mile and a half, I'd say, two miles. It, uh, this culvert won't near handle what this ditch handles. But when this ditch gets big, all this, you can see where it flooded here this summer early down this low. Get up in there to the farm ground. All this water will run right over top of this culvert when it gets really moving. So we're trying to get her packed down and get some black top on it. Put some diesel on top of the black top to adhere it a little bit. And then we'll all be able to stand a bigger ditch, which may be coming here any day next week. Ward Anthus put the other culvert in here for us. She couldn't cross this when we started farming it. She knew we wanted to be able to get the other side by that and drive around about two miles from, in from this direction. So he put an old culvert in. I don't know if it's old or new though, but it, it rusted out, so put in new. Okay, we've been out chasing army worms around for about a week now um, but yeah as you can see here different spots that have army worm activity but I have been noticing a lot of people talking about getting black stuff on their shoes when they walk across the yard but that's where the army worms have been dying on the tips of the grass blades I guess because they've been getting too much to eat but anyway so yeah these guys here are still working and we're getting ready to treat this bad boy with some bifenethrin on these uh, army worm maps and uh, not a real fun job because a lot of people put a lot of money in their yards but mother nature never know what she's going to deal us um, last time I seen this was about seven years ago but it was only like 10 customers that had it versus so far I've hit about 50 or 60 of them so far um, one there <clears throat> so anyway yeah kind of depressing at times but uh, you know just uh, just the force of nature but from what I've been reading online and uh, hearing through the news channel that uh, you know the yard should bounce back if we get some rain and cooler temperatures so we got a big hurricane coming up out of the Gulf early next week and see if that can bring us some, at least some moisture. It is what it is. It's army worm invasion of uh, 2021. So COVID don't get us, the army worms will. <laughs> next culvert, it don't look good either. Replacing. We're the new culvert crew. So, don't call us for a culvert job. Just saying. Reese, master operator. Oh, we make it look good. Don't give us a call. <laughs> well, shop's empty. Everybody went home for the weekend. Time of the year that we're uh, still taking weekends off, which is nice. So, got uh, two culverts in today. And then it even rained a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. Um, not to get everything wet. I haven't checked the gauge yet. It might have rained a tenth or two. Not sure. It might rain a little more of that. But, it has been a hot, dry week. Good chance of rain quite a bit next week, so that'd be good. Maybe we get good rain next week. Maybe the beans will about be done being irrigated, so that'd be one less thing to do. Won't be harvesting next week, but uh, maybe the week after we'll be started 
started doing something. But until then, thanks for watching this week. Uh, Watch your Ivers merch, ivers-farms.myshopify.com. Thanks for watching. See you next week.